Hey everyone, a lot of you have requested this video right here. I thought here with the holiday weekend approaching here, it would be a really fun time to drop this video here in the morning, have some fun and fill out my Pro Bowl ballot. I'm filling this out on the fly here, so let's let's have some fun. I'm also gonna be using the help of PFF premium stats to um, decipher any close calls we might have. So a shout out to PFF, everybody. Um, go get yourself a PFF premium subscription if you want the best public um, pool of stats and grades and metrics, you name it. Love me some PFF analytics, but um, let's start with quarterback. And I think you start with Brock Purdy, who I broke down on my live show with Matthew Collar about why he's the runaway MVP. I would go Josh Allen behind him. I think Lamar Jackson. Those are your three kind of MVP favorites. I would follow suit in terms of my Pro Bowl ballot vote. Uh, Pro Bowl ballot voting, which is a tongue twister. Um, then I think you'd fall in with Dak, who I think is was the MVP favorite last week. So that's four down. I still think Mahomes, who leads in total yards, is maybe not putting up classic Mahomes numbers, but I still think Mahomes is worthy of the Pro Bowl. I mean, he's still been one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL at the end of the day. Um, and then you're between Tua, Stroud, Hurts. That's a pretty easy call for me. It's Tua. It, it sucks. Uh, Matthew Stafford as well, by the way, has been sensational this year. I should have mentioned his name probably ahead of um, like probably Hertz and Stroud, but I think you give the nod to Tua. If I got another vote, I would have to give it to Matthew Stafford, but you know, I think he'll get in as an alternate at least and get that respect. Um, but uh, yeah, shout out Stafford. Those are six quarterbacks, fairly easy uh, to pick the top six. Um, running back, this is going to be tough because this has not been a great running back season. There's three clear answers for me. That's Christian McCaffrey, James Cook, who has been spectacular both through the air and on the ground and Raheem Mostert who has 20 touchdowns on the season he has emerged as one of the premium backs in the NFL at 31 years old he's been a special special player but after those three man um gets really tough I, I think Kyron Williams has the touchdowns and the total yardage it's been a huge like when when he hasn't played for the Rams you've really noticed the difference so I think he's a pretty easy pick I think you can go with Travis Etienne. He's got the double-digit touchdowns. He's had some monster games. He's passed the eye test. He's been really good. And then it's tough. You know, I, I think Jameer Gibbs is making a case for it with how, how well he's playing in his small sample size. I think Rashad White probably has the strongest case here. He's 150 yards uh, above Joe Mixon here, who I just, uh, Joe Mixon doesn't feel like a pro bowler to me this year. Neither does Pollard, Bijan, Swift. I mean, look, Rashad White, the second, it, it, you know, him and James Cook are very similar in that they're they're very good running backs. Um, in Rashad White's case, they haven't had very good run blocking, but really when they discovered they can tap into him through the air, it has unlocked a lot of aspects of that Bucks offense. So I think I will go with Rashad White there. And uh, it's I think that's a pretty, pretty safe top six right there. Um, then we got the wide receivers. They really only let you pick six wideouts. Man, that is brutal. This shouldn't be too hard. I mean, those four are very straightforward. Um, then I don't want to just forget about Keenan Allen, but he's starting to miss some games here. Um, you know, I think... Oh, man. I thought this was going to be easier. I, I think St. Brown needs to be in. And I think Keenan Allen, I mean, their stats are just kind of pretty self-explanatory. Um, and they've both been incredible. Those are the top six for a reason. I know I'm not, I'm kind of going with chalk there. Maybe Mike Evans instead of Keenan Allen, because he's got four more touchdowns. <sighs> Keenan Allen, you can project forward a little bit, probably not going to have the strongest finish because he's hurt and their quarterback situation. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we'll flip that. I think we'll go Michael Evans over Keenan Allen. Evans is having another fantastic season. Uh, I think you should get eight votes for wide receiver though. Cause a lot of these guys feel like pretty big snubs. I mean, Pittman is like the entire Colts passing game. You still got Diggs down here. Keenan Allen, Ayuk's breaking out this year. Jamar Chase, DJ Moore, like 
so many Pro Bowl caliber players, but when you only get six, that's tough. So there's going to be our six votes for wideout, fullback. Um, how many? How many? We have to vote on five, uh, six fullbacks. That's ridiculous. All right, Uschik, CJ Ham, uh, Nick Botton just got cut. The, people are voting on him because he's in, he's been in the headlines lately. I mean, Andrew Beck had the kick return touchdown that was sick against the Jags. Uh, Kari Blassen game. And I guess Pat Ricard. I haven't noticed Ricard as much this year, but those will be my my fullbacks. Let's move on. That's the most fullback analysis you'll get on this channel all year. Uh, tight ends. All right. Man, it's pretty surprising to me that Kelsey actually leads in yardage because it doesn't feel like that. Um, Kittle, to me, has been the best tight end in the league this year when you factor in the run blocking. Hawkinson's been a monster for the Vikings. Sam Laporta for sure should be in it. He's having one of the best rookie tight end seasons ever, and he's been just one of the best tight ends in the league. I want to give some love here to David Njoku, who, similar to kind of like TJ Hawkinson, like there's been games where he's been the whole offense, and especially lately, they've really tapped into him, and he's just fully versed. Like he's getting open, he's using that athleticism, but. I would bet if we go to uh, tight ends here, I would I would bet he leads in missed tackles forced. Yes, he has a healthy lead, and I'm sorry it's so small here, but he's at 19. The next guy down is Gerald Everett at 14. Um, so David Njoku, um, he's getting up there in yards as well as we just saw on that last screen. So Njoku's got to be in. I mean, Kelsey should be in. He's leading the league in yards. He's still a great tight end. Um, and then after that, Let's give some love to Trey McBride, who's having a breakout season in Arizona. He's really come on since Kyler came back. They cut Zach Ertz to, like, turn the keys over to him. He's been a beast. Uh, he only has the two touchdowns. I get it. Um, but by the eye test, he's just he's a better overall tight end than a lot of these guys. And, I, I mean, Kyle Pitts as well. I uh, can't really say. Trey McBride's a better player than Pitts, but um, you can't really argue with the stats. He's got 20 more catches and 150 more yards. So... Uh, we're going to go Trey McBride as our sixth tight end. Congrats, Trey, on uh, getting the vote here. All right, offensive line. Okay, Laramie Tunsil has been as good as ever. Uh, where the hell is Trent Williams? Why is... This is weird. They don't really sort these guys by, I guess, because there's no stats. So you actually have to know what you're doing here. So Laramie Tunsil, Trent Williams, um, Penny Sewell has been utterly ridiculous this year. We have three more votes to do here. Um, Jordan Maialata, Luke Gattaki is having a great year for Tampa. Stanley has fallen off, honestly. Um, where's Derisaw? Derisaw should be in here. Um, there he is, way down here. Tristan Wirfs. So there's five. Rashawn Slater's been pretty good. Andrew Thomas is still at that level, but I think he's missed too many games. Um, so I would leave him off. I'm just kind of going through the names here. I think O'Neal, Mylotta are both worthy. Garrett Bowles. I haven't really noticed Garrett Bowles much this year. How is how is Bowles playing? Um, per PFF grades here, just to get a look to see if he's you know, in the mix for consideration. I feel like he's usually having a little bit a little bit less uh, pass protection, but a very good run blocking year. Who, who does PFF think we should vote here? Tyron Smith. Yeah, that's fair. Tyron Smith's having a monster season, staying healthy for the most part, but he has missed some time. My lotta right up there. I could probably zoom this in a little bit for you guys. Um, yeah, I would feel pretty safe with my lotta. It's been great again. Um, Zach Tom deserves a shout out here. Colt Miller always in the mix. Lane Johnson. It's a tough call. Um, yeah, I think we'll go probably Tyron Smith and Jordan Mailata. Oh, we only have one more vote left. Um, just because Tyron Smith has missed some games, we'll go Mailata. Um, but those would probably be the next two uh, that I'd be going for there. Um, then we got guards. Guards are a little bit harder. Um, Quinn Miners, you're getting my vote. Dude's been a monster in Denver. Um, then we got a lot of guys to sort through here. Zach Martin, that's pretty easy. 
Let's see. Trey Smith deserves a thought. Brandon Sheriff's having a bounce back season. Hmm. Might need to take a look at the PFF grades to give us some inspiration here. Um, Elton Jenkins has been pretty good. I mean, Chris Lindstrom, still a monster. Not quite, quite having the year he had last year. Quentin Nelson, honestly, probably won't get my vote. Um... Antonio probably will. Let's let's defer to some of the grades here um, just to get uh, a little inspiration on our final three votes. So, yeah, there you go. There's Miners, Lindstrom. Um, man, Kevin Dotson, yes, absolutely. I was tweeting about Kevin Dotson lately. He's been such an unreal pickup. He's always been known as a great pass protector in Pittsburgh, but you see him out there mauling dudes. And how did he play the other night? Uh, against the Saints. Another great game. So, yeah, Dotson, 100%. He should deserve a monster contract. Um, so that leaves us with two votes left. Um, you know, Robert Hunt's been really good. In Oh, Tyler Smith. Yes, Tyler Smith has emerged as a premium, premium guard. He's been so much better than I ever thought he would be in the NFL. I, I think I was dead-ass wrong. Uh, about who he was as a prospect coming out. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, pick your poison. You got Wyatt Teller, Trey Smith, Landon Dickerson, Joel Batonio. All these are kind of classics. Elton Jenkins right there, Quentin Nelson. I do think Quentin has become a, a slight, uh, has been viewed as like as if he's still maintaining this like elite guard play. I really don't think he has. Um I would probably lean towards Betonio, but it's tough. I think we'll I think we'll go with Joel Betonio. And then do we have to pick six centers as well? We do. All right. So, I mean, Connor Williams has been awesome. He's missing some time here. He's been awesome. We'll circle back to that maybe. Uh, Jason Kelsey, a hundred percent, yes. Um. Let's see. McCoy probably gets a vote. Creed. Ryan Kelly's having a huge bounce back season. Lloyd Cushenberry's been a monster this year. Those are the first four that really catch my eye. And and Frank Ragnow, of course. Um, those are the easy picks, I think. And then you're debating between like McCoy, Mitch Morse, Connor Williams. I mean, Andre James has quietly been pretty good. Um, Tyler Linderbaum as well. Um, all those guys kind of in the mix. Let's let's defer to our friends at Pro Football Focus on this one. Uh, Connor Williams is going to be the highest graded one. Uh, Drew Dahlman quietly in Atlanta. There's Eric McCoy, which is what my gut tells me. Linderbaum's right in the mix there. So it's um, it's tough, but I, I think I'll give it to Eric McCoy, who's continue to be a, a stud in New Orleans uh, with Linderbaum probably would be next up for me um, but that takes us to the defense now and of course we have the Madden positional terminology here We're starting with DNs um, so we get to pick six of these guys we got Miles Garrett, Max Crosby very easy, Nick Bosa um, some of the you know there should be enough that kind of stand out um Aiden Hutchinson down there, only six and a half sacks for Hutchinson, huh? I feel like he's doing way better than that um, in terms of pass rush productivity. Um, let's take a peek there. This one usually takes a little extra second to load. Um, but, yeah, I, I feel like Hutchinson's going to be a, a pretty easy pick there. Uh, I know he's still up there in terms of pressures. Still loading. Here we go. So, yeah, Hutchinson is... Third in pressures, he just hasn't had that sack luck. Like, look at that. You sort these guys by pressures, everybody's got double digits. Um, so definitely think Aiden Hutchinson, uh, especially in this group with DNs, is a pretty easy vote. Um, Jonathan Grennard, 12 and a half sacks. That, oh, Trey Hendrickson. Sorry, Bengals fans. I don't know why I just dismissed him, but he is an easy vote, probably ahead of Hutchinson. Um, and then you're left trying to pick one more here. I mean, Grenard has quietly been a stud. Bryce Hoff just might deserve this vote here. Uh, Will Anderson's been very good. I don't know that I'd quite give him the Pro Bowl nod here. 
Um, so I'm debating between Huff, Grenard. I think that's probably it. And if you are looking at pressures, Huff has 56. He's got the pass rush win percentage. It's it's going to be off the screen here. Let's uh His is still up there. He is 7th in pass rush win percentage. Um you know, I think a shout out here for for Jonathan Grenard is very deser deserving. Um but I think Bryce Huff has been the bigger impact from start to finish. So, we'll go Bryce Huff and then we get to probably pick between some um Let's go to the outside linebackers and see what kind of a mess this is here. So they're going to have mostly edge players here. So we're voting in really edge, uh, 12 edge players. I don't even really see a whole lot of off-ball guys mixed in here. So we get to pick another six edge guys. Um, that's going to be TJ Watt, Daniil Hunter, Josh Allen, Micah Parsons. Very easy picks right there. I think Rashawn Gary needs to be in the Pro Bowl. He has taken over football games. He's going to be up there for um, pressures for him have actually come down a little bit. Uh, 48 pressures, 10 PFF sacks, uh, but the win percentage is 14th. Maybe, you know, he's actually maybe had some quieter games as of late. He had a really fast start. I mean, yeah, he has... Uh, Kansas City was a lot more quiet. Giants, Tampa Bay. So maybe he has actually hurt his Pro Bowl case. I'm not saying I wouldn't vote for him, but we might need to pause on that for a second. Um, Thibodeau, I'm happy for him that he's got 11 and a half sacks here, but I mean he has not been the down in, down down out impact uh, of a guy like a Rashawn Gary. Um, you know he's converting. A metric ton of his pressures into sacks. I don't. I can't even find him on here. He's 45th in pressures, 13 sacks to show for it. Um. So, you know, Bradley Chubb has really heated up lately. He's kind of the opposite of Rashawn Gary here. Maybe both these guys uh, could have a strong case there, uh, coming off his best performance against the the Tennessee Titans. Uh, do we have two votes remaining? Bradley Chubb, Rashawn Gary. Not to take anything from away from Khalil Mack, but outside of that one Raiders game, he's been not really on these guys' level throughout the course of the season. He's having a nice bounce back year, but I still think Gary and Chubb have, have been overall better. Um, Reddick is the one guy I want to make sure he hasn't like blown up lately, and I'm dismissing him. Um, he does have 60 pressures, 13 sacks. Very impressive. Uh, as of late, he is kind of heating up he had a stretch of a sack in six straight games really getting after the quarterback in there um that's a tough call man this is the year of the pass rusher <sighs> man i'm gonna be called a bradley chubb hater if i take bradley chubb off he's also got six forced fumbles hmm this is where this is why it's so stupid because i wish we could go back and take like Bryce Huff off, <laughs> you know, that would make this very easy. If I could just take Bryce Huff off and then I could give the vote to Gary Chubb and Reddick. Um, you know what? Uh, I'm not going to take myself too seriously here. I'm, I'm going to pick Rashawn Gary. I'm going to go with Reddick, a slight nod over Bradley Chubb. Um, tough call, tough call. Sorry, Dolphins fans. But that's, uh, that's how we're voting here. You can slam me in the comments for it if you want. I get it. It's just tough. You got to pick someone. They're all very tight. Um, all right, cornerback. Deron Bland definitely deserves it. Eight picks, six to the house. Jalen Johnson's been one of the best corners in the entire NFL this year. Um, we get to pick only six corners. That's crazy. So we had to vote in 12 edge rushers, uh, but only six corners. I don't know that Jalen Ramsey's played enough. Um, to deserve the Pro Bowl here. And, of course, they're sorting by interceptions, so I have to really scroll through uh, to make sure we're not forgetting anybody. Um, I almost want to pull up my, my cornerback tier maker list here that we made uh, my cornerback rankings. 
uh, just to make this a little easier. I mean, I mean, Sauce doesn't get the interceptions, but he 100% needs to be voted on. Uh, Pat Sertan as well has continued to be really good. So, like, there's those guys. Um, then, you know, like I said, Jalen Ramsey just hasn't quite played enough. We know how great he is. Uh, I would probably make the same case for this group right here. Uh, Shardavarius Ward's the one that, like, this year has really been a monster. So I think if we're just voting off of this year, because that list was also, like, projecting forward uh, who the best corners are. Um, so I think Shavarius Ward, and then I think, honestly, Darius Williams, unless he's kind of fallen off in the last couple weeks, he's been really special this year uh, as this sorts through here. Um, Devon Witherspoon continues to be a stud. DJ Reed's been a monster, but there's Darius Williams. Let's kind of compare Devon Witherspoon. He's got 10 pass breakups, given up eh, 367 total yards. Darius Williams has given up a lot more yards, 15 pass breakups. You know what? Let's go Spoon. I think you factor in Spoon's dominance against the run. He's got the sacks as well. Uh, I think we'll go... We'll go Spoon, who's been just a delight to watch. Uh, we just got to find out where the hell he is on here. Um, uh, there's the other Witherspoon. Is he not even listed here? That's going to be frustrating. I mean, come on. He's got to be. There he is. I don't know why that didn't come up. It just sorted weird. All right, we found him. Okay, and then we've got safeties. Oh, they give us strong safeties and free safeties. So we vote in six corners, but 12 safeties. Why is this system so freaking stupid? Most of these guys play the exact same position as free safeties. What are we literally doing? Look, this is so stupid. Um, but okay. Um, Derwin's not going to get my vote this year. Grant's been all over the field. Kyle Hamilton's been awesome. That's what's funny, too. Oh, okay, we are in strong safety. Never mind. I was like, these guys play strong. Dude, Josh Metellus, 100%. He has been so unbelievably good this year. Um, don't sleep on Josh Metellus. I think Jabril Peppers probably gets the vote for me. We'll circle back to that. Um, Buda Baker's good player. I don't know if I necessarily would vote for him. Um... It's tough. It's tough. Um, let's see. Yeah, this gets really tough. Julian Blackman's been sick. He's having a really good year. He's got the four picks. I think you vote there. Um, seeing the, the competition here, I feel even better about Jabril Peppers. And then Brisker's just been a little bit too streaky for me. Derwin, I just, I can't, I can't go Derwin, guys. I love Derwin James, but he has not had a good year. He's given up a lot of yards in coverage. I mean, this is why it's so stupid. We got to vote for this many safeties. Um, I mean, I guess Buda Baker still has 41 tackles despite missing some time. I think that that's probably the best we can do with that last vote. Um, then we got free safeties. I mean, Geno Stone has six interceptions. Jesse Bates is the all-pro safety. He's been a he's been the best safety in the league this year. Um, so those two, I'm okay picking Justin Simmons. He continues to be one of the 12 best safeties in the NFL. Um, Dax Hill would be a good pick here. He's been a, uh, having a great season. Oh, Antoine Winfield, easy vote there. Antoine's been he has changed the the course of like three games for the Bucks. So he's an easy vote. Uh, some of the, the plays he's able to make are just game-wrecking. Um, Javon Holland has had a really good year. He would get my vote. Um, and then probably Minka. Dax Hill, Minka. Bynum's having a good year, but I don't know if I'd put him over um, either Minka or Dax. Let's, let's see if the PFF sorting here gives us any other ideas i think we got um yeah i mean you could see how big of a year jabril peppers is having there um 
Malik Hooker is quietly grading out really well for Dallas. Uh, pretty friendly situation there. Xavier McKinney has come on late. I like that. I like Xavier McKinney. Just uh, He hasn't had a lot of ball production, but playing well back there. Um, yeah, it's tough. And, and PFF, like, safety grades are always challenging. Uh, Minka's still 10 games, though, for Minka. I don't think that's enough. Oh, this is so hard. Um, we just we just got to pick someone. I, I, I like Xavier McKinney. He's got 65 tackles. That's more than most of the guys on this list. He's grading out well. Uh, I like it. I like it. All right. Um, special teams. This one's harder for me just because I usually skip through special teams. I know Brandon Aubrey's been insane. I wish they would show us, like, field goal percentage. Um, I think I'll just pick, I'll just pick the ones that I, I trust here. Koo, McPherson. I think that's probably, probably good enough in terms of kicker votes. I will say a long snapper. I got to give my vote to my guy, Christian Kuntz. One of the funniest characters in the league. Uh, I know Christian, so. Just everybody, when you're filling out, out your ballots, make sure you pick Christian Kuntz. Uh, not just a great name, a uh, great dude. And then punter, I mean, gosh, I'm not going to do I'm not gonna do punter. I don't know, guys. I, I don't watch punts <laughs> for the most part. I'm usually either running to the bathroom or skipping through it. Um, sorry for the lazy analysis there, but uh, uh, just defer. I, I just don't want to provide, like, I, sure, I could go sort the PFF grades on punter and pick the highly, highest graded ones, but, um, you know, that's not my own original analysis, so I just don't feel good about it. Uh, all right, return specialists. I mean, who's had great return years off the top of my head? Uh, Turpin, just because he's he's Cordero Patterson. I don't know if he's done anything this year, but... Um, one of the best, if not the best, kick returners ever. Um, not Kadarius Tony, I can tell you that. It's crazy that the leading stat is is the number of returns that they have. <laughs> um, so you got to look at like the average kind of. Um, I mean, Mims is twenty nine is pretty good. Agnew. Agnew was someone I thought of. That's enough. That's enough for kick returners. And then I think that's oh special teamers. Again, I don't know, guys. I'm not watching kickoffs to tell you. Although there is one guy. There is one guy I got to vote for, and that is uh, he's on the Vikings. He's the gunner on the Vikings, and he's not an option here. So that's a bummer. Uh, but whoever the gunner for the Vikings is, it's the guy that Brett Coleman was tw tw tweeting about in the preseason, like, this is how you make the team. He's had some insane punt-gunning moments. Um, so I don't see him on here, but he should absolutely make it. Uh, but there is your 20, 20, 20, uh, that was a lot of 20s, 2024 Pro Bowl ballot. We got through it. Appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know where you agree, where you disagree. Have a great holiday weekend. Hit that like button on the way out. I appreciate you guys, and we'll see you later. Peace out.